Hey guys, Andy here, and today I'm going to teach you how to stabilize video footage in Sony Catalyst Browse. Now, what is Sony Catalyst Browse? Well, it is a program that is used to stabilize footage from Sony cameras that contain gyroscopic data, which is found in primarily newer Sony cameras. If you're wondering if your camera has gyroscopic data, you can look that up online. Just look up Sony gyroscopic data or gyro data and see if your camera is on the list. And what gyroscopic data does is it gives you an extra degree of stabilization. So it has data for the exact positioning of your camera as it is moving. Sony Catalyst Browse interpolates that data and gives you a much higher degree of stabilization than in-body stabilization or lens stabilization or even electronic stabilization can give you. Now, before we begin, though, I do have to mention there are two, technically three, versions of this program. You have Catalyst Browse, which is what we're on today, which is the free version. And then you have the version that I primarily use called Catalyst Prepare. In addition to that, there's also the Sony Catalyst Suite, which includes video editing. But for today, we'll just be dealing with primarily Catalyst Browse. And then later, I'll show you the difference between Catalyst Browse and Catalyst Prepare. So prepare yourself for that. So what I have here is a folder of some example footage. And if you're wondering if your Sony camera makes videos that have gyroscopic data on them, you can check that here. And a really easy way to do that is just to look at the icon. So as you can see, I have some clips from a DJI Pocket and some clips from a Sony camera. You can see this little adjustment icon here that indicates that there is some metadata, namely gyro data, that can be adjusted. And if you click on it, you can see what metadata it contains for stabilization, rolling shutter reduction, and horizon lock, which we'll get into in just a sec. So to begin, you just simply go to the clip that you want to edit, click it, and then go down to adjust clip. And so if we go over here to the adjust clip settings, you can see that lens breathing compensation has been grayed out, so we can't use this because this footage was shot using a third-party lens, but if you had a first-party Sony lens that has lens breathing compensation, this option could be selected as well. But we're moving on to rolling shutter reduction, which unfortunately, Sony cameras are notorious for having really bad rolling shutter. So I'd highly recommend that you click on that. And then next we get into the actual stabilization settings. So you have your automatic stabilization, which it's already clicked onto by default. Then you have your manual stabilization. The main difference here between these two is that automatic stabilization analyzes the footage once you click analyze down here and gives it a cropping amount that it believes to be the best for the overall footage. And then manual mode allows you to manually set a cropping amount and the stabilization doesn't go beyond that. So for now, we'll just click on auto. Then next you have allow black area. So how the stabilization works is that it basically crops in and it gets rid of a lot of the shaking on the sides to allow for a much smoother looking image. And if you allow the black area, the images that would normally be cropped out as it's being adjusted, you would see this sort of like weird shaking blackness. It's not something I would include, so I would leave this unchecked. And so the next option is horizon lock. And what this does is it uses the gyroscopic data in the camera to determine a level area. So it allows your footage to be level and not like tilted to the side, even if it's stable. But if you have horizon lock on, it'll keep it as straight as it can possibly be. Now, unfortunately, if you click on this in Catalyst Browse, it comes up with this little plus icon, which shows that you cannot export this with Horizon Lock on Catalyst Browse, but you can with Catalyst Prepare. And we'll show you that later. So what we'll do now is go down to Analyze. And then as you can see, since it was selected in Auto Mode, the auto cropping amount that it had determined to be the best is 0.695. And you can see this is the unedited version, and this is the edited version. So you can see there's a bit of a crop in, it looks just slightly zoomed in. But if we come down here, you'll see the amount of instability. So the peaks here 
are when the camera is moving around a lot. And so because at the very end here, there's a lot of instability with this sharp spike, it determined this as the overall number because that's the highest number, right? What you can do if you don't intend on using this part of the footage is change your out point to a little bit earlier. It adjusts the auto cropping amount very significantly from 0.695 to 0.133. So that way your footage isn't cropped down tremendously. And if you only want to stabilize a certain section of the video, say you don't want to stabilize the whole thing, you just want to stabilize like two minutes of it or whatever, there's in and out points that you can put into. So it'll start at a different point and end at a different point. And you just adjust them by clicking and moving these arrows for the end point here or the out point here. And so now that we have our settings where we want them, we'll go up to this little arrow pointing up here, click on that, and that'll give us our export settings. You can choose where you export your video to and a bunch of other different things. I personally like to leave a lot of these settings alone. I think it's just fine the way it is. And then from there, you would hit export when you're ready. Then after you hit export, you go up to your clip and select it and then hit OK. And it will begin the rendering process. So now that you know how to stabilize in Catalyst Browse, I want to show you some of the differences in Catalyst Prepare. So I have the same folder, same everything. And what you would do is you would do exactly like you did with Catalyst Browse. Click on the file. You can see it has metadata for stabilization, rolling shutter lock, reduction, and horizon lock. So you click on that, go to adjust clip, and it has the same screen, but there are a few extra options. So we'll click on the same exact settings, rolling shutter, it even has the same in and out points. I think it interpolated that from Catalyst Browse, personally. With Catalyst Prepare, one of the main differences is that you can select horizon lock, and we'll have to reanalyze it after you're selecting it. And as you can see, it does crop in a bit more than it did before. See, before the auto cropping amount was 0.133, and now it is 0.178. So in order to keep the horizon steady, it does crop in a little bit extra. But personally, I think it adds an extra degree of stabilization and keeps things nice and even. And so from there, you would go to your export settings, and you can still adjust the same things here, but you have a lot more options here. You can do lens distortion compensation, lens breathing compensation, if the lens is supported, rolling shutter reduction, stabilizing with the horizon lock. You can limit the auto cropping amount here as well. For stabilization, I have it at 0.05, so it doesn't get too crazy. And then you have lens breathing as well, and all these settings, which are Similar and a couple extra ones as well. And from there, you hit export. And one of the main reasons I use Catalyst Prepare, which is the paid version, versus Catalyst Browse is for the batch rendering. So as you can see, I had the clip that I already worked on, already selected. And there's another clip here that also has data. So we'll select that. And you can click select all, but keep in mind, there's also a lot of footage that can't be used, such as the DJI clips. So in this case, I manually selected it, but then once you're ready to render, you just go over here and click OK. And it'll render the other clip with the same settings that you made for the previous clip. And it's just that easy. So yeah, that's how you stabilize footage in Sony Catalyst Browse and Sony Catalyst Prepare. If you like this video, be sure to give a like and subscribe for more tutorials. And if you have a question about video editing, please send it in the comments down below and your question could be the next tutorial. This is Andy, signing off for now, and as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.